So before we will start our journey to new economics, I would like to make a short stop and discuss some philosophical major implications of new economics. So as we will see using brain imaging technique, we can actually predict our decisions. So as you see here, this is an example from Brian Knudsen's study that will be discussed in the follow-up lectures. We can predict purchasing decisions of the subjects. It's not an ideal prediction, but it's still above chance level. So already now we can predict our decisions by brain activity. Does it change our view to the nature of our decisions, to our view on our freedom, to the idea of free will? I personally think it does change our view on freedom in general. So are we free when we make decisions? So is it an illusion that we can make a free decisions? But our decisions in reality are pre-programmed by our brain. We simply do not know the reasons of our decisions and we explain our decisions by some uh, external additional factors, simply not knowing the actual reason why neural networks programmed or selected certain decisions. So this is actually not a new idea in neuroscience that we have an illusion of our control over the decisions. So Benjamin Libet conducted a famous ex experiment already 30 years ago. So he invented a very smart technique. Imagine you see a version of the clock on the screen. You see this moving dot. And now you have a very simple decision to make. Please move left or right finger at any moment of time. So that would be your voluntary decision to move finger. But please remember the position of the dot at the moment when you will be aware of your decision to move your finger. So with this technique, we can actually detect the moment when you become aware of your decision to make movement of your finger. So with this technique, Libet conducted a very smart experiment and recorded 30 years ago the brain single uh, brain signal related to the decision making. So he actually used EEG, electroencephalography, to detect brain activity related to the decision. And here you see a simplified version of his results. So this line indicates a brain signal related to the decision to move finger. A red line, vertical red line, indicates the moment when subjects became aware about their decision to move finger. But you see that brain signal starts far before people become aware of their intention. So a couple of hundred milliseconds before we become aware of our intention, we can predict the decision by brain activity. So it raises a question about our freedom. It's just illusion that we can have a control over our decisions. Perhaps our decisions are simply programmed by the brain. So recently, this study was replicated with more complex functional MRI technique. Basically, the same paradigm was used. Subject could see on the screen a stream of letters. And subject has to move finger. But she has to remember the letter on the screen that is presented at the same time when subject is aware of the intention to move finger. So at the end of the trial, subject is exposed to the matrix of letters and on this matrix, she has to indicate which letter corresponds to the onset of the decisions. So with this technique, we can detect at which moment the subject became aware about the intention, her intention to make a movement. So here you see a result of the functional MRI study. On the right, you see a graph representing a prediction of the decision derived from the brain data. So using a quite complex analysis, you can actually predict decision a few seconds before the decision uh, was made and a few seconds before subject became aware about the decision. So red vertical line indicates the moment when subject became aware of the intention to move finger. Eight seconds before we can predict this decision by the brain activity. Eight seconds is an enormous period. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With this very long time, I can predict the decision of the subject using neuroeconomics techniques. So 
This experiment was recently replicated with a more advanced fMRI, 7 Tesla fMRI scanner. So here, once again, you see that vertical red line indicates the moment when subjects become aware about their decisions. But uh, nine seconds before, you can predict this decision based on the brain activity of the frontal cortex. So does it give us quite new insights about our nature, about our freedom? Actually, in my opinion, it suggests that we have kind of illusion of a control of our decisions. In reality, our decisions are programmed by the brain, and we just explain um, our decisions to have a coherent picture of the world. This is a not new idea. A lot of philosophers like Luther, Spinoza and Kant actually suggested that we simply have an illusion of the freedom. Spinoza nicely uh, summarized it, uh, suggesting that just not knowing causes of our action is the idea of freedom. So currently we try to repl replace philosophical arguments by the full version of the human brain. So if we do know the uh, structure, the physiology of the brain activity underlying decision making, we can predict perhaps our decisions far in advance when we become aware about our intentions to make these decisions. So there are different opinions in the society for neuroeconomics. So different people think differently. Some people think that neuroeconomics is still keep open an opportunity for freedom. I, to be honest, believe that currently neuroeconomics suggests that we have more or less illusion of the freedom of our control of, over our decisions. Our decisions are programmed by complex neuronal networks. We will discuss these networks in details during the course. But our consciousness simply rationalizes the results of the activity of these networks. And this is a not new idea. So I would just give you a famous psychological example illustrating choice blindness, so-called choice blindness. So imagine a subject has to select between two photos. So you see two females and you can select between these two photos. For example, subject selected left photo. But experimentator manipulates uh, photos and instead of photo left photo gives right photo. So subject never selected right photo but she gets this photo. So what happens? Only in 26% of the trials, people recognize that they haven't made this choice. So most of the people blindly accept uh, what they, this kind of choice they never made. And what is interesting, people nicely explain their decisions, the decisions they never made. So for example, here you can see some explanations. This girl looks like my aunt, or this girl looks very hot. People nicely explain decisions they never made, because these decisions were manipulated by the experimentator. It's a good illustration of choice blindness. We have an illusion that we understand the reasons and the motivation of our behavior, but instead our behavior can be very much programmed by neurons, taking into account various factors that we are not aware of. So, Neuroscience of decision-making or neuroeconomics is trying to build a model that would explain the nature of our decisions, that would go below our subjective experience and would explain us real reasons for our behavior. Of course, some of you can believe that there is still space for freedom. Some perhaps would be more pessimistic about it, so I will be happy to get your opinions during this course about these problems. But I think in a way neuroeconomics is extremely provocative and interesting field. And this idea that neuroscience can bring us new perspectives of our, on our behavior is not very new. I would mention now eliminative materialism of Paul Churchland, who suggested that, for example, psychology is a kind of folk science that will be eventually replaced by the full version of neuroscience. Perhaps it will never happen, or it will happen in, uh, uh, in the far future. But I think neuroscience uh, and neuroeconomics has an ambition to merge together various fields to build a unified theory of our behavior. So 
Newer economics is a highly multidisciplinary field, and I think it makes it extremely exciting and interesting uh, for students. So I would strongly recommend you to uh, learn newer economics more. And I like the provocative nature of this field. It reminds me of uh, modern art when very standard objects are combined in an unusual way. Yeah? And it gives us new perspectives, new insights. And the same way newer economics combines psychology, economics, neuroscience, biology, genetics, to create completely new view on the nature of our decision making. So if you will be interested in more details about the uh, Society of Neuroeconomists, you can actually go to the website of the Society for Neuroeconomics. So some in important uh, links are located there. And for example, handbooks, recent publications are mentioned on this website. I strongly recommend you to read books uh, created by Paul Glimcher. He's a godfather of neuroeconomics, and I think he published fantastic books, uh, introductory books to neuroeconomics. And also recommend you to read this Bible of neuroeconomists, this book, Neuroeconomics, that is written by the leading neuroscientist in the field. It can be quite difficult to read, so some chapters, to be honest, are quite complicated. But if you would need a recent review of the state of art research in neuroeconomics, you can find it in this book. So I think we will start now our very interesting journey into neuroeconomics, into a very provocative, interesting field, trying to combine various sciences to build a general theory of decision making.